Hello guys, um, today we're going to talk about the movie Highlander. <laughs> oh boy, this movie is going to be fun to talk about. Um, so first off, the movie was made in 86, 1986. It's rated R, it's hour 56 long. It has 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb, IMDb with 116,000-ish user votes and 24% on Metacritic with 7 critics. It stars Christopher Lambert, who was in Mortal Kombat, and Sean Connery, who was in the double the James Bond movies. It's directed by Russell McCall, M U L C A H Y. So Mulcahy, I'm gonna say it like that. I'll just call him Russell. And he also, huh? I guess I forgot to look at that director. Hold on a sec. Oh man, let's see. He also he also did the Teen Wolf TV series actually, which is kind of interesting. Um, the movie has 69% on Ron on on Ron Tomatoes. The movie has 69% by critics with 35 critics. And 79% by audiences with about uh, 135,000 ish user audiences. And the critics' consensus on Rotten Tomatoes is that people hate Highlander because it's cheesy, bombastic, and absurd. And people love it for the same reasons. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, the movie is available to stream on Amazon Prime, Tubi TV, and oh my god, I don't know what that one is. Hold on a sec. Let me check what that one is. Popcorn Flex. On um, and the movie is available to rent and buy on Amazon, YouTube, Google Play, Microsoft Store, and iTunes. Now and uh, let's see. And the movie is well. And the movie was released on DVD in the year 2000. Now this movie, I, I'm gonna be full honest. I fucking love this movie. <laughs> um, there are definitely cheesy moments. Now this movie, the what I love about this movie is just the story is very original. The cinematography is fantastic, like amazing cinematography. The acting is the acting is good, but there's a lot of cheese, and I I love cheese. But the cheese, I don't think the cheese is a point where like ruins like moments like the serious moments do feel serious more or less, and the funny moments are funny. I mean, there's sure there's one or two serious moments where it's like. Where, where the way everything is framed and everything can be seen as funny, but... So the lead actor, Christopher Lambert, oh, the big criticism of this film is the fact that is the cheesiness. And a lot of that is... A lot of the cheesiness has to do with the fact that... Well, the lead actor, Christopher Lambert, I think he was only in one movie before this. He's from France. He's French. And... What the filmmakers didn't know is they casted him, and they were going to work on the film. They didn't realize he didn't know any English. He had to completely learn the English language to do this film, along with training with the swordsman and every all that kind of stuff. He had his plate full. So when you watch the film and you see him, you gotta give him some. You have to commend him for for being able to do all of that for this movie because learning the the I I read. Side note, I read that the English language is actually one of the hardest languages to learn in the world. I think that because it's so different than other, how other languages are constructed, that's what I heard or read. Don't quote me on it. If you, if you need to correct me, do it in the comments. That I, I, because if I'm wrong, I want to know. But yeah, so it's, it's quite an undertaking for him. And on top of that, he was supposed to play a Scotsman. So you're a French guy who has to learn English, and then have to and then have to speak English with a Scottish accent. So that led to probably some 
accent issues in the movie because a lot of people criticize that they don't know what kind of accent he has. And in all honesty, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he had to juggle so many dialects and languages all at once. And in all honesty, if if you watch the movie and you kind of think about it a little bit, you could make a case that it actually works to the character's benefit in terms of describing what the character's been through and everything, but but that's a topic for another day. Um, so, but yeah, Sean Connery's in this. Sean Connery's awesome in this. I love him. He's he. The movie kind of jumps back and forth through time periods to present day, and oh my god, this movie. Ha you know, in the eighties, where where the like the lightning effects, like there's there's something about the eighties. The way they do lightning effects just looks so amazingly awesome compared to other time periods of filmmaking, and it's especially now. Now they don't really. Now it's a little different, but back in the day when they did it, it looked awesome. I loved it. They do a lot of it in this. I, and this movie is very, it's very, it's very over the top. It's very, it has camp, it's cheese, but at the same time, it has heart. And I can tell, you can tell the people who made this movie gave a shit. You can tell that the people making this movie, they wanted to make a good movie. Now, there were some scenes that were cut from this film that are lost forever in a, a warehouse fire. So, that's unfortunate. This this copy I have is the most complete version. They did add a few things from the original version. And when this movie came out, it bombed like crazy. But, but it gained a huge following incredibly quickly. Because it was just such a gr original story. And it just had a cool style. It was funny. It was... It was epic. That's the best way to describe this film. Epic. Not necessarily, on a technical scale, the best movie, but the ideas, the care, the shit-giving. I mean, <laughs> the shit-giving. <laughs> but people gave a shit. This movie does have sequels. They're all awful. <laughs> um, the second one, by far, is the worst, from what I've read. By fans. The rest of them are op are better, but this is what people consider the best. But there was also a TV series, and the TV series did incredibly well. And a lot of people consider that more of a follow-up to this than the movies. So if you see this, I'm I'm gonna watch a TV series one day, and I'm gonna check that out with this. Um. I don't, I don't know how much the other movies in the TV series connect to this. I don't know how well they do that with, because this was written as a standalone movie. It wasn't written with the idea of having sequels and spin-offs, really. So it's kind of weird how they try to mix it. They didn't do it well, I guess. On um, the TV series, I think did the best with it though. So really, this in the TV series is really all you need. Unless you get really into it. I mean, because this, a lot of people have done a lot of different stuff with the mythology of this over the years through movies and maybe even books. I don't know if there's been books or video games. Maybe comic books. But yeah, it's it's a great movie. It's just, it's over the top. It's beautiful to look at. It's epic. It has great special effects. The acting, the acting's, the acting's pretty good. It is cheesy. But I think a lot of that just has to do with the fact that the fact that I think that was just the tone. I think that was just like what the director wanted and what they wanted. They wanted certain moments to be like that, and it works. Oh, on a special side note, the guy who plays the bad guy voices Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob. He's a voice actor, and and when I watched this movie, I thought they dubbed his voice. They didn't. <laughs> it, it's actually kind of amazing. Because <laughs> I didn't recognize them, first off. And second of all, the early scenes like, okay, they probably dubbed his voice. And maybe they dubbed his voice with his own voice because they couldn't pick it up in regular. But when you see regular scenes of him just talking with someone, it's his voice. It's actually very impressive. 
Oh, and the soundtrack is badass too. You got you got Queen, you got fucking Queen in the soundtrack, and great Queen songs. Oh my God, this movie's just amazing. <laughs> um, on a technical level, the acting. Jack Lambert's second role, he can only do so much. It pretty should work, but there's just some stuff where it's like, I I can see some of the issues. And I think some people were a little confused. I think some people... Because the movie cuts quite a bit. For a two-hour movie, there's a lot of cuts. Because the director, he wanted to direct it like a music video, have a lot of quick cuts. And I actually think it makes the film go by super fast. And, it, and they put a lot in it for a quick, fast film for that. And I, I, I loved it. I loved exploring that world. Now, a lot of people may, if people really get into it, they could probably find plot holes or something like that, but in all honesty, any, every movie has plot holes. And that's not really something I really look for, unless it's staring me at the face with a shotgun yelling, tell, tell me what the fuck, can you tell I'm a plot hole? <laughs> Just yelling straight in my face, can you tell I'm a plot hole? Unless a movie does that, I don't really look for them all that much. Because that's not really my focus with the movie. Um... But yeah, um, this movie's great. I definitely recommend checking it out. I do. It is available on DVD pretty well, especially streaming and everything. I definitely, definitely recommend checking it out. And if you really love this movie, I, I don't know what chronology, because the movies kind of jump around a little bit with the character, like after this movie, before this movie. I think they talk about, like, other characters, maybe descendants or pre-descendants. I, I don't know, but but you may want to do some do a little digging before you watch the movies. You could just watch them in order. might make the best sense. Um, but if you're going to watch more Highlander, I'd probably say go for the TV show first. Unless you really want to see some of the shit they put out after this movie. <laughs> Like, here's here's a good end. The sequel is called Highlander 2 The Quickening. Yeah. <laughs> the Quickening. <laughs> the Quickening. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of thing. But, I don't know, maybe one day I will watch them. Just because I want... Just because I just want more Highlander. I'll definitely check out the TV series at some point. But, but yeah. Overall, this is a great movie. I highly recommend checking it out. I highly recommend watching it. Um, I will say, if you're not a fan of cheese, you're probably going to have mixed feelings about this. If you're not a fan of 80s movies, you're definitely not going to like it. <laughs> um, if you're not a fan of... I don't know. It's just... I will say, well, this film kind of reminds me of Army of Darkness. The, or Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness. It, it, it is quite a bit like that. Although I do think Army of Darkness is actually more cheesy than this. It definitely feels like it could be within that world. Kinda. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, this movie could be in the Evil Dead universe, per se. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with Evil Dead, but in terms of tone, style... And the the stuff and the subject matter at hand, it could w fit within that area, actually. But you know what? Yeah, this movie's awesome. Check it out. I definitely recommend it. And yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and like the videos, and have a good day.